Hey y'all, it's Crystal J with something to say and for today's video we're talking all things personal styles. I wanted to make a video about personal style because I feel like a lot of the times we go looking to other people trying to understand style based on what we like on them rather than honing in and cultivating our own personal styles and so I wanted to make a video with five easy steps. This is five easy steps which was how I was able to take my style from zero to a hundred really really quick. I would say that my style got better through COVID actually and it's sad because ain't nobody seen this work but when they do it's gonna be a problem. One is stop using Instagram as your gauge. Instagram makes us think, hey, I think that looks cool on her, so I wanna try it too. But it's not, that's not your style. It's like, I wanna do that because it looked cool on her. For my example, I will give Ariana Grande. Do you guys remember the era? I think it was in 2014, 2015. There was this outfit that Ariana Grande wore and it was like, she still wears it, but it was specifically this time. She wore this lavender sweater and I'll put a picture right here. It's lavender sweater and this was in her white shiny boot era. And she still wears this kind of outfit now where it'll be oversized sweatshirt, thigh high boots, ponytail, right? And I say this because it's very significant to her, but you've seen people try and do that too and if you've seen somebody do that do you ever think oh my gosh to look so good in her outfit or do you think oh my gosh now she trying to be like ariana grande because you you remember there was a point in time and it still is everybody tries to recreate ariana grande looks because they are so cute to her because for me i think that sweatshirts and boots look good on ariana but i don't think it looked good on y'all and that's again that's my opinion but i'm like it's very tailored to her style so that's my first little point is just don't use Instagram as a gauge because I feel like you you pinpoint people you want to dress like. So step number two, make a mood board. The first thing that I did when I tried to cultivate my own style, I did this at the beginning of COVID, was I created a Pinterest board and I called it my aesthetic because I was trying to find out my aesthetic and just like my style because I never knew what it was. And honestly, Pinterest is a great place for you to find an aesthetic because Instagram is more about people than it is about things. And Pinterest is less about people. Like for Instagram, if I'm looking for outfit inspiration and I'm looking to my favorite influencer, I would be like, oh, here I go. Like I would look sweetie and then find my favorite sweetie pictures. But that's just a mood board of sweetie. That's not outfit inspiration. That's, oh, I like this outfit on sweetie and maybe this is my style. No, but on Pinterest, what it is is, oh, I see a pretty dress. I don't know who this girl is. I like this picture because I like her outfit. So I save the picture and it's noting to my brain, oh, you like her outfit, that's why you saved it. Not, oh, I like her and I like what she's wearing on her, so I save it. So my aesthetic board is full of, honestly, it, it, it helped me find my color palette. It helped me find, um, uh oh, girl. Hell oh. Again, like I said, it helped me find my color palette. It helped me find my aesthetic. It helped me find um, what made me happy. I found out that slip dresses were my style. I think they're gorgeous. Um, I am a slip dress from Rat and Boa. If they sponsor me, you know what's up. But honestly, I, I do think making a mood board, it's helpful. It helps you find out the types of things that you like and you're not hearing anybody else's opinions. And the algorithm just keeps showing you things that you like. Step three. 
So step three is make sure you have good basics. So I will give you, you know what? I'm gonna take it back. I know I told y'all I wasn't gonna give you the juice cause you might not like the flavor, but it's okay, I'm gonna give you a sip. So I'll give you a sip, see if you like the taste and we'll get into it. So when I say make sure you have good basics, I mean, no matter who you are, make sure you have pieces that are basic. I think another thing, and I saw a funny TikTok about this where some girl was talking about, uh, you know, when the people be sliding down the wall, <laughs> they were sliding down the wall because it was like, oh, every time I shop, I shop for statement pieces. So then when I try and put an outfit together, I don't ever have an outfit because I only have a bunch of loud statement pieces and nothing, no real outfits. And how many times can you wear? Obviously you can wear outfits as many times as you want, but I'm like, for me, I think versatility is a myth unless you have the, again, like I said, with influencers where you have the means and the profession that allows you to actually be versatile because you are getting and recycling new clothes literally every month. Like, that's not us. That's not me. So for me, what I do is I buy really good quality. Bump that. I don't even know. Because to some people, good quality isn't Forever 21, but baby... Some of them twelve ninety, what? Some of them twelve dollar ninety cent body suits been with me for the past three years. So I think that's quality. Somebody else might not. That's somebody else's business. That's why I really like places like Naked Wardrobe. I made a video for Back to School where I styled the um, sleeveless bodysuit five different ways and that was a part of me trying to show that you really don't need a lot of things to make an outfit cute and you also don't need a lot of things to pull different aesthetics so through that I was able to style this one piece um edgy classic lazy laid back um sporty all of those different ways with just adding a couple little pieces and jewelry to it. But I feel like when you have statement pieces, um, I, I personally don't have many statement pieces. So what I do when I buy statement pieces, I usually buy a statement piece that is either a jumpsuit or a dress. I didn't even mean to do this, but this is a great example of a statement piece. I'll put a picture up here of what this is. So this dress is obviously it's muted, but it has a pattern and the pattern, it's cats. It's like, it looks like scribbles, but it's actually cats everywhere. And for me, I like the idea of a statement piece as a dress because it's just one piece. And to be honest, you can wear a dress as many times as you want because a statement dress only works for so many different occasions. So by the time you wear it again, it's like everybody forgot or you go in some place where them people wasn't there or they, it, who cares? And I think if you look at things like that, where you're like, hmm, how many times could I wear this? But it's not how many times, it's like, how many ways could I flip this? So that's why I gave two examples. So the bodysuit, I could wear that five different ways. And honestly, if y'all gave me some more time, I could probably freak that, I could freak that maybe like 30 times for real. And I have. And I'll do it again. The biggest takeaway from this entire experience. The biggest takeaway from this experience is that I'm gonna do it again. I, I could do it many times. This shirt, I could wear it one type of way. Step four or part four, whichever, however, the biggest part of personal style is wearing what makes you comfortable. And I do preface you because I really do want to kill this whole idea that you have to go 
with the trends because that's not true. I've seen people on Twitter who are at war, at war, at girl, at war, talking about, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, BBL fashion this, BBL fashion that. And that always confused me because I, I just, I, I don't get it because I'm like, if you don't like BBL fashion, you don't have to dress like that. And obviously like, oh my gosh, I cracked the code. Like she's so smart, like duh. But when I say that, I mean like, we have to throw away the idea of always trying to do what's trendy. And when I say this, I mean always trying to do what's trendy if you don't like the trend. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason for me to hate on what's trendy if that's just not my vibe. What makes style personal is you doing you. And that's why I said wear what makes you comfortable. If you don't like heels and you are not comfortable in heels, don't wear them. And even if somebody bullies no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> if somebody like talks me like messy about you, that doesn't matter. Like you just might not like to wear heels. And if you, cause some people can't walk in heels and that's their business respectfully. But if that's not your style, you don't have to force yourself to wear heels just because you want to go somewhere or just because da 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 and you shouldn't be able to be forced into wearing heels if somebody got something to say so you know what i'm saying because somebody might come for me but um i feel like for me the people who i like the most like my style icons even if I don't particularly dress in the same way as them. I really admire their styles because it's so tailored to them. But yeah, I just want to break the stigma that you have to go outside yourself to find your personal style. I think um, if more people were aware of the fact that who you're putting as your style inspiration might be you just liking them and what they put on and that might not be for you then we would be able to you know get past that because the question of like oh how how do i dress or can you style me is always confusing to me because some of the things that i like and the vision that i have most of the times people don't actually like for themselves so when people ask me oh can you style me and i'm like oh i mean i could because styling really has to do with me finding things that you like for you rather than me just telling you to put something on so you can look like me i'm gonna stop rambling because you know uh, i'm trying to put this video up tomorrow and it's long so i'm gonna have to edit it don't forget to like comment and subscribe we are so close to a hundred subscribers bruh. like so so close like so so close so like somebody's out here rocking with me that's crazy i i really appreciate that so if you guys are interested in subscribing to me do so if not do so actually no if you're not interested in subscribing to me please do not <laughs> You know, like, I'll wait. <laughs> Substitute teacher, I'll wait for somebody who want to be here. It's cool.